Welcome to the introduction to tapping video. What I want to do with you today is teach you the basic steps of tapping. Tapping is just the most powerful tool. In fact, what you're going to see is it looks a little strange, but the reality is when you do it, it has an amazing impact. We've been able to get rid of phobias, cravings for alcohol, chocolate, drugs, food. We've been able to help people release the symptoms that they have of withdrawal when they start to withdraw from an addiction. Tapping can be used to let go of a feeling like shame or guilt that may come up as you begin to do this work or feelings of fear of rejection. A lot of fear can be tapped away. It can also be used to look at what are the basic causes, what are the traumatic experiences, the experiences of rejection perhaps, whatever, that are the root cause of your addictive behavior. You know, where did this all start? So tapping is extremely powerful. We can also use it to get rid of physical pain. You know, you may, not just the pain of withdrawal, but if you have a migraine headache or a backache, sometimes what you would have done if you had a feeling that you didn't want to feel in your body, well, I'll go drink and numb it out. Or an emotion, you know, anxiety, fear, um, depression, whatever, we can tap those out as well. So today I want to teach you the basic protocol for tapping. So the basic idea is that we're going to tap on eight what are considered acupressure or acupuncture points. And then when we tap on those, what happens is we are able to kind of disengage the pattern of connection that goes from having a pain or a feeling or a withdrawal symptom or whatever it might be that then leads toward the behavior that we don't want, in this case, drinking. So we can disappear these uncomfortable feelings, these limiting beliefs. And so the first thing we have to do is learn what the tapping points are. And so there's eight points we're going to work with. Number one is at the top of the head. So at the top of the head, you want to work with three fingers. We're going to tap on these points. And just like putting needles in an acupuncture uh, place, we can actually just tap and we can achieve much of the same uh, result. So just tapping, if you were to take and imagine lines going up for the top of your ear, going right up to the top of your head, that's where we're tapping. And you want to just tap around that area a little bit. We'll tap normally at each acupuncture point about seven times, something like that, five to seven times. You don't have to count. Uh, it'll just become a natural kind of quality to you and you'll know how to do it. And what we'll do is we'll tap around that spot and we'll find that tapping is very forgiving. In other words, there are actually people now that teach this work. This work is called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique Tapping, uh, who actually do it by imagining tapping on these places and they still get the same results. However, we're going to tap physically. And so we're tapping here. This is the first spot. The second spot is called the eyebrow point. And so we're tapping right at the end of your eyebrow assuming you're not a unibrow. If you are, you know, you're just going to figure out just about that far apart, tapping on both eyebrow points like this, two fingers. And then the next place is called the side of the eye. And literally you're going right up against the eye socket. Almost if you went any further, you'd go into the eye socket. So we're just tapping here like this. Again, two fingers, your index finger and um, the next finger down. And then the next spot is under the eye. And again, we're going to be tapping right up against the socket. And for most people, if you roll down a little bit, you can feel a little ridge right there. So between that ridge and there. The next point is under the nose, right up in that little uh, groove here where the nose is coming out and coming down, right up in there. And then the next point is your chin point. So it's right in the cleft of your chin with a little downward pressure as if you were kind of landing right at the edge with the downward pressure on that little chin shelf that's there. And the next spot is called the collarbone point. So you start where your collarbone is. And you want to go down about an inch and then over about two inches. And, and here I use three fingers and just tap all around that place. And again, you're going to get it. And then the last point is called the under the arm point or the bra point, bra strap point. And it's under the arm. And if you are a woman, it's right where your bra strap will be coming across under your arm. For men, just Light it in here, and you can feel around. If you do, you'll find most people find a sore spot. There's mine right there, and that's the point you want to tap on. But again, if you tap all around in there, you're going to get it. Okay, so those are the points that we'll be tapping on. And there's an additional point called the karate chop point, and it's right here on the heel of your hand. So if I was doing a karate chop, I would be 
hitting that heel of my hymn. And here we use all four fingers and we tap like this. And this is only used in what we call the setup phase, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So now we know where the points are. Top of the head, eyebrow, side of the eye, under the eye, under the nose, chin, collarbone, and you can tap. Now notice I'm tapping on one side. Some people tap two sides at a time. One is plenty, and you could tap here and go over here. It still works. So we got collarbone and under the arm. All right, so those are the points in the karate chop. Now the first thing you have to do in the protocol is determine what am I going to tap on. Am I going to tap on releasing a limiting belief like if I don't drink, I won't be any fun at parties, no one will like me, or I need to drink in order to relax, or if I don't drink, I start feeling these feelings, I can't handle those feelings. So those are limiting beliefs. We can tap on a limiting belief. We can tap on a feeling, fear, anger, guilt, shame, upset, whatever it might be. We can tap on um, an experience we had, some negative experience we want to release, you know, a time when I was rejected, something like that. We can tap on uh, the craving for alcohol, you know, this desire to drink or this craving for a glass of wine uh, or this need to drink before I go to sleep. So determine what the most pressing issue is that you want to release. And you've seen in the book, there are a lot of uh, things you can tap on. And so today let's tap on um, this belief that I'll be rejected by my friends if I don't drink. And so what you do is, the, the, once you've decided what the tapping focus is going to be, then we have to determine what is the level of discomfort or the level of intensity of this belief or this feeling or this physical pain that I want to tap away or this craving that I want to tap away. If it's, a, if it's really strong, it's a 10. If it's not existent at all, it's a zero. So somewhere between zero and 10 is where your intensity of the belief, you know, I believe this really strongly, or I kind of believe it, or this pain is really intense, or it's really just a you know, minor pain, or this craving, it's like I'm gonna go out of my skin if I don't get a drink, or you know, it'd be nice to have a drink, it might be a three. So you're gonna determine on a scale of one to 10, how intense is this thing that I want to release. And then, what we do is the third step is we're going to tap on the karate chop point while we say, this is called the setup phrase, even though I have this fear that I'll be rejected by my friends if I don't drink, I totally and completely love and accept myself. And we're going to do that three times. So whatever it is you're tapping on, even though I have this craving to have a glass of beer, or even though I have this craving to have a glass of wine, I totally and completely love and accept myself. So we're going to tap three times. So let's, let's pick the one that we said we're going to tap through for demonstration. So even though I have this belief and fear that if people don't, if I don't drink, my friends will reject me, I totally, deeply, completely love and accept myself. So we can say deeply and completely, totally and unconditionally, love and accept myself. Any of those words will work. So even though I have this belief that my friends will reject me if I don't drink with them, I totally and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this fear that my friends will reject me if I don't drink with them, I completely and totally love and accept myself. So we do that three times with the setup statement. Then what we do is we then create what we call a summary statement this fear of rejection or this belief that I'll be rejected. So now we're just bringing it down and then we're going to tap on the eight points or as we tap, we're going to be saying our summary statement, this fear of rejection, 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 this fear of rejection. Now notice, I'm saying it out loud, and you want to do that. Now if you're somewhere, I've seen people do this in the airports before they get on the plane, this fear of the plane crashing or this claustrophobia, and they may not be saying it out loud, so you could do it silently, uh, but when you say it out loud, it has much more impact. So you want to, it keeps you focused on the experience of that fear or that belief or that pain that you have. So we're going to go like three or four rounds in order to uh, before we measure again to see what the um, intensity scale is. 
and it should go down. And that's what our goal is. So this fear of rejection, 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 this fear of rejection. So what I want you to do right now is just pick, um, you can tap along with me and you can tap on whatever you want, but I mean, almost all of us have a fear of rejection. So just for drill, because you'll actually learn it as you do it, the physical doing of it. So just tap along with me. I'm going to start up here and go, this fear of rejection, 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 this fear of rejection. Another round, this fear of rejection, 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 this fear of rejection. Let's do one more round. This fear of rejection. This fear of rejection, 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 this fear of rejection. And then what you can do is stop, take a deep breath, and usually I close my eyes and I go, okay, I'm going to go back to either the pain in my body, the craving for a drink, or the belief I was thinking about, or the feeling, the fear, the anxiety, whatever it might be. And I just know it's on a scale of 1 to 10, how intense is that feeling now? Now, for some of you, you'll find that just after tapping a few rounds, it'll all completely disappear. For others, it might go from a 10 to an 8. Then you want to tap some more until you get it down to below a, a 4. Once you get it to a 4 or below, what you can do is add in what we call a positive choice statement. So up until now, I've been focusing on the fear or the pain as I tap. Now I can begin to tap in an alternative, a choice that I want to make. So even though I have this fear of rejection that people will not be my friends if I don't drink with them, I choose to believe that I can find friends that will like me even if I don't drink. Even though I have this fear of rejection that if I don't drink, my friends will reject me, I can choose right now to believe that they will like me even though I'm not drinking. Even though I have this fear of rejection that people won't like me if I don't drink with them, I choose not to drink anyway. I can choose to drink a club soda or a ginger ale or a Coke. Even though I have this fear of rejection that people won't like me if I don't drink, I choose now to believe that people will like me. But I might even be a better friend when I'm not drunk. I can choose to not drink and still have a good time. So we can tap in the positive as well as tapping out the negative. And again, you would stop, close your eyes, and on a scale of 1 to 10, how intense is that feeling or belief or pain or physical sensation now? And we want to keep doing it till we get it down to a zero. Now, if it only goes to a 1 or 2 and you're tired of doing it, you can stop. Go back to it the next day. Sometimes on the really intense things, like when you go back and you're dealing with, you know, the root cause of your uh, addiction, well, like, you know, maybe that you were rejected or the fact that your dad abused you and alcohol was one of the ways to numb out because you just couldn't run away, whatever it is. When we're going back and we're tapping on those feelings, and we'll do an audio uh, version of, of getting in touch with the limiting belief or the addictive pattern that comes from a childhood experience on audio now that you know what the tapping pattern is. And you can always use the diagram in the book as we're tapping along. But I'll always say to you, I'll say top of the head, eyebrow point, side of the eye. So you always know where to go. When you're doing that, you may want to do it for three or four days in a row or maybe every other day for a week, whatever, to really release anything that might be that intense. But here's the cool thing. You know, it used to be that psychotherapy might take months, even years, to heal anxiety, depression, pain, fear, phobias. Now, we can actually get rid of those, sometimes in five minutes or less. I was tapping with someone not too long ago, uh, one of my coaching clients, and we didn't get through one complete round when she just started to laugh. And I said, what happened? She said, it's gone. And I've, I've taken people who were afraid of singing on stage, and we tap maybe for like three or four minutes, and the next thing I know, they get their guitar, they're singing for everybody, and now 
CK, the person I'm remembering that I did that with last, she has her first CD out and she's performing all over the Northwest. So you can get rid of anything through tapping. So this is a very powerful tool. You now know the basic steps. I encourage you to do it. This could be something you do every day, like brushing your teeth, removing at least one block, one fear, releasing some tension that may have come up, might have come up in the day when maybe you were cut off by a car and you got really angry at somebody, or when those cravings come up, as they often do for a while. Just tap on it until it's gone. So now you know how to tap. Let's use it. And I promise you, this is one of the most transformative and powerful tools that you'll have learned in this program. So make sure you use it when you do the tapping audio on releasing, identifying and releasing blocks because it's really, really powerful. All right, take care.